Tuesday is the final day for voters in Georgia to cast a ballot and decide the critical Senate race in their state. 1.85 million Georgians have already voted in this record setting contest. And joining us now is Gabriel Sterling, the chief operating officer in the office of the Georgia Secretary of State. Hey, Gabriel, thanks for joining us. So I, I want to start with um, what we're seeing now in this early voting and just see what you think about this. You know, we we've seen long lines um, at some of the the, the voting places. Some people are pointing to this as a sign of voter enthusiasm, but some Georgians are questioning why they are spending so much time in these long lines, hours in some cases. And I'm wondering, what do you say to them? Well, there's a couple of things. You got to compare apples to apples on this. And people are looking back at the 2021 timeline when there was a nine week runoff. And the last time we had a four week runoff, which has been the law in Georgia for, I don't know, 100 years, 50 years, a federal judge in 2013 made it a nine week runoff, not for voter convenience, but for overseas voters. And that's how I had to build around that. The reality was it's the holidays. It's hard to get poll workers. Um, some of our biggest counties had to cut back on the early voting locations. It's a question of logistics. So I do think this will probably lead to a debate on the efficacy of runoffs and having them this way because of these, in part because of these lines. But 1.852 million is a gigantic number. To put it in perspective, in 2018, the last time we had a runoff, we had one point four, six million people vote altogether in the entire four weeks. So we've already blown past that. So why not change the early voting time back to nine weeks then? Well, because it's not what the law in Georgia is and never has been. We had a federal judge kind of by fiat do that. I, and I think if you polled Georgians, nine weeks is way too darn long. They would, we don't want to have nine weeks of TV commercials going through Christmas. <laughs> so four weeks may be too short. Or let's look at what other states do, and maybe you don't need runoffs anymore. Maybe, maybe you go to a 45% threshold. Maybe you do an instant runoff. But we always learn from every election to find ways to make the voting experience better for Georgians. So uh, let's talk about Election Day. Do you expect we're going to have an answer on Tuesday night, or is this going to take extra time to determine the winner? What are you preparing for? Listen, we're preparing for you know it being a very tight race. Um, I anticipate we may not know on Tuesday night. It just, it really depends because it's up to the voters and, they, and they're showing up in droves. 1,852,000 is a ridiculous number that no consultant I've talked to, Republican or Democrat or election official, thought we'd see that many this early. So there's obviously a lot of enthusiasm. Of course, we're the only bell of the ball right now. Every political dollar in America is focused on Georgia. And it's interesting because both Democrats and Republicans can point to the turnout models and say, that's good for us. So nobody knows what's going to happen. It's really up to the individual vote in Georgia. Yeah, and, and you point out early voting in, in this race has set new state records. Uh, but there's data that was released by your office, and it shows that mail-in voting plunged by 81% from the level of the 2020 election. How much is the state's new voting law a factor in that? What do you think about that? Well, personally, I, it's not, again, you got to compare apples to apples. The runoff in 2018, which is a four-week runoff, this is a four-week runoff, we've already surpassed the record for that. That was a previous record of 84,000. And what else is different between now and 2020 slash 2021? There's no COVID. People in Georgia have a preference to vote in person. That is the reality. We are going to break. We have already broken the record for a midterm runoff use of absentee ballots at nearly 140,000. Nearly 60% of the people who have requested them have already sent them back in and had them registered. I anticipate getting another 40 or 50,000 at a minimum over the next three days. I'm not, I know you're not a doctor, but did you say there's no COVID? COVID at the end of 2020, 2021 versus now, very different environments. And I don't think okay. anybody can really That's fair, that's fair. Just wanna make sure our viewers didn't hear that. Oh. No more COVID. Gabriel Starling says so. All right. Um, I want to ask you about uh, what happened today. Former President Donald Trump, who recently announced his 2024 candidacy, just called for the termination of the Constitution to overturn the 2020 elections, as it should be suspended. You've been very vocal about Trump and election denialism. This may be the farthest he has gone yet. What do you say to this, Gabriel? Hey, Malai, I, I was having a really good day enjoy, enjoying my Georgia Bulldogs winning SEC championship. I hadn't seen that yet. And it's ridiculous. It's insane. It's just to suspend the Constitution. Come on, man. Seriously. I mean, if you want to be president of the Constitution, you don't say suspend the Constitution. It's just, it's this continuous level of more and more outrageous comments just to try to keep the, the 
anger alive is just, it's not helpful. It's not going to help his candidacy. And I, and I think that it's just the wrong direction to go. And I think more and more Republicans and Americans are saying, okay, I'm, I'm good. I'm done with this now. I'm going to move on to the next thing. Yeah. And he's still spewing those those lies about um, what he says was election fraud, which doesn't is, exist. How is that factoring into the landscape there um, with, with people and how they're viewing the, the election there in Georgia? Well, frankly, it has had essentially no impact. The biggest impact I see is occasionally some bots on Twitter. Outside of that, it's not having any real impact at all. Um, in fact, as you can see, Herschel, Herschel is giving him the Heisman maneuver to say, stay away from Georgia because he knows if President Trump comes, he tanks his candidacy. <laughs> So I just don't think that we're going to, it's not having any real impact on the ground here in Georgia anymore. And we saw that with both the primary wins where all the Trump endorsed candidates got spanked and not a little bit, but crushed. And then the general, when, when all the Republicans, with the exception of Herschel, who was a Trump endorsed candidate, won outright. Now, this is a fight for the Senate race. So every vote's going to count. And I encourage every Georgian who wants to have their voice heard, come out and make your vote. So do your vote on Tuesday. And I about guarantee there won't be any lines because we've had so many people vote already and we'll have 2,700 polling locations open.